Hello, this is Andrew from Collab Learning. Today's book is Beauty, A Very Short Introduction by Roger Scruton. If you like my work, please like it, subscribe to this channel, check the playlists, and support me on Patreon and PayPal. The links to Patreon and PayPal are included in the description to this video. First, I'll talk about what's interesting about it, then I'll move on to what you can get out of this book. In this very short introduction, the philosopher Roger Scruton explores the concept of beauty. The book examines what makes an object, either in art, nature, or the human form, beautiful, and examines why there are differences in judgments of beauty. It is an education in aesthetics. Although Scruton doesn't come out and tell us what beauty is, he does manage to write a superb and provocative book on the subject throughout history. His chapters include Judging Beauty, Human Beauty, Natural Beauty, Everyday Beauty, Artistic Beauty, Taste and Order, Art and Eros, The Flight from Beauty, and Concluding Thoughts. A variety of interesting case studies from literature, painting, music, architecture, and more are used to support the analysis. From the beauty of the human body to landscapes such as countryside, gardens, to the beauty of the mundane, such as the lovely table setting, stylish fashions, to the works of artists. Art and beauty concern expression, thought, style, philosophy, love, and appreciation. So as you can see, beauty is something so important in life, yet it is so difficult to fully define. It is a great many things. It can be sacred and consoling, yet also disturbing and profane. It can be exciting, attractive, uplifting, but it can also be scary. It can affect us in an unlimited variety of ways and is never viewed with indifference. It stays with us and sticks to our memories. All people must admire what is beautiful, whether in the arts, nature, or something else. It's because they have in their hearts something deep down that beauty awakens and causes them to rejoice and to be in awe. Unlike popular belief, beauty is not just subjective. Beauty is also an objective ideal, and one that's imminently important to human life. Beauty has a pivotal role in the human experience. Beautiful objects are desired for contemplation. This is something more than just a search for information, or desire to satiate the hunger. The wanting is to contemplate it. For me, I tend to find things beautiful for a long time, if not forever. The analysis in the book agrees. Beauty does not have a function other than itself. It doesn't expire once it is acquired. Beauty carries within us transcendence into the eternal. That beauty feeds a person's soul. It takes us out of ourselves and has us reflect on something greater than ourselves. Beauty could be thought as being able to induce us into a kind of suspended state where we forget about ourselves while transcending into something bigger and higher. Art and beauty is a reflection of the spiritual hunger and immortal longings of people. It is about a man's search for meaning. Art moves us because it's beautiful, and it's beautiful because it is meaningful. It can be meaningful without being beautiful, but to be beautiful, it must be meaningful. We do not see the great cost and lack of utility to obtain beauty, which compensates us through its ideas and the pleasure that rises from them. Our favorite artworks of art seem to guide us to the truth of the human condition, and by presenting completed instances of human actions and passions that show the highest worthiness of being human. However, there is a controversial part of the book. It is the traditional and conservative stance that it takes towards modern art. Scruton believes that postmodernism is out there to destroy the traditionally sacred so that art is less about aesthetics but more about destroying the status quo with shock value. He argues strongly for works of art and beauty that are linked to truth and goodness and that beauty has a moral dimension. He rejects moral and cultural relativism. He links beauty with the sacred, which implies that a lot of religious art has beauty developing from the sacred. This is, as you can imagine, quite controversial in our time. 
For Scruton, beauty is the result of aesthetic contemplation, a kind of collaboration between the viewer and the work. So works of over-advertising and moral propaganda are not objectively beautiful because the agenda of moralizing offends against the autonomy of the aesthetic experience. It exchanges intrinsic for instrumental values and losing whatever claim it might have had to beauty. This is because they had an agenda shoved down our throats. By contrast, there are works of art which contain intense moral messages in an aesthetically integrated frame without forcing themselves on others. Art is not morally neutral and can have its own way of making and justifying moral claims, but it can not be moral or political propaganda and force an agenda. If it is, it is certainly not beautiful at all, but ugly. The book's central thesis is controversial. Scruton argues that beauty is something that must be individually experienced. Nevertheless, it is essentially rational and thus connected to truth and goodness. These are our moral ideals. So true art is an appeal to our higher nature, and an attempt to affirm that higher plane in which moral and spiritual ideals prevails. Art matters because all of us have within ourselves a real presence of our spiritual ideals. Without the conscious pursuit of beauty, we risk falling into a world in which the worthwhileness of human life is no longer clearly perceivable. The pursuit of beauty is the pursuit of meaning. It is the pursuit of the sublime. What is sublime? The sublime is the highest state of beauty. Think of some of the most beautiful places on earth, like a great mountain, a great city, a great work of architecture, and epic scenes of nature. Maybe even a beautiful man or woman can be sublime to you. A great piece of creative art can be sublime as well. The sublime are three pleasures of the imagination that form the strongest emotion. These are the three pleasures of greatness, uncommonness, and beauty that arise from visible objects. They give us a sense of the unboundedness and the expanse. And at the heart of it, there is a feeling of awe and terror at its greatness. We feel a bit frightened at the, its beauty because we don't understand how it can be so awesome. The experience of the sublime also involves a self-forgetfulness, where astonishment and fear is mixed with a sense of well-being and security when confronted with an object. The sublime is worth fighting for. This book should be taught in schools so people can realize they have a certain height towards they can aspire to. It sees what real beauty is made up of without cliches and without addressing higher senses. Beauty says something deep about our inner values and our reasoning and has some co connection to morality as well. It plays an important role throughout many different cultures. Art gives us an ordered idealization of what is highest in us. It shows us the strength, beauty, the sacrifice, and the aspiration. Without the conscious pursuit of beauty, we risk falling into a world of addictive pleasures and unworthwhile activities. This traps us into a world in which the worthwhileness of human life is no longer clearly perceivable. On the other hand, the experience of beauty also points us beyond this world to a kingdom of ends in which our immortal longings and our desire for perfection are finally answered. A very short guide to beauty is a very thought-provoking and intellectually rigorous examination of beauty and its many facets. It helps us find a greater sense of meaning in the beautiful objects in our lives and ultimately helps us understand ourselves. I rate this book a 5 out of 5 stars. So that's why I think about beauty, a very short introduction. Please put your thoughts and ideas in the comment section. They always make a great conversation. I hope you find my review to be informative. Thanks for watching.